supermodels. Nowadays, they're a dime a dozen. But one model was arguably the first supermodel of the world who paved the way and was known just by her first name, Gia. In the realm of fashion and modeling, there are rare individuals who possess an undeniable magnetism that transcends the ephemeral world of trends and beauty standards. Gia Karanji was such a stunningly beautiful woman whose life became a cautionary tale to the darker side of fame, addiction, and the pressures of the spotlight. As they say, the higher you rise, the harder you fall. This is Gia's meteoric rise to fame, which also led to her tragic downfall. Born on January 29, 1960, Gia Marie Karanji was a natural-born beauty with striking features, an enchanting smile, and an aura of raw authenticity. Discovered at the tender age of 17 by a local photographer, Gia's captivating androgynous appearance challenged conventional norms, breaking barriers in the modeling industry. But as a child, she was abandoned by her mother at the impressionable age of 11, and this sense of loss is still believed to be the biggest attribute to her issues even later in life. Gia found other meaningful connections through her friendships and was very open with her feelings. In fact, she would often declare her intentions with floral bouquets. Although for Gia, she had her sights set on the ladies. She went from having platonic girl crushes to frequenting gay clubs and wooing women. She definitely stood out from the crowd wherever she went. Where heads would turn, there was Gia Karanji. Naturally long, bold, and confident, Gia began to model in local advertisements. And the rest, as they say, is history. It was also around that time that she set her eyes on a petite blonde beauty named Sharon Beverly. Apparently, Gia dated Beverly's brother first, but her attraction to the same sex was just too strong to ignore, and she knew she had to be with her. But this spelled nothing but trouble. For one, she was engaged in an inappropriate relationship with an older Sharon while Gia was still a minor. So although they didn't have a close relationship, Gia's mother made sure to put an end to it, like any parent in their right mind would, I imagine. One thing led to another, and as fate would have it, Gia met Wilhelmina Cooper, one of the most successful models of the 1960s. When Cooper took Gia under her wing, she finally had that maternal figure she was yearning for all her life, and an amazing mentor who would open doors for her career. She was unstoppable, for a short time at least. One of her major shoots she did in particular catapulted her even further in her career trajectory. It was so iconic that people in the industry still talk about it to this day. It was when Gia climbed and posed against a chain link fence and started shrugging out of her clothes and eventually shedding him all together and ended with nothing but her birthday suit. Flashy. The photos caused a sensation and just like that, Gia established herself in a modeling world almost overnight. She was in demand. She worked with every top fashion houses like Versace, Armani, and Saint Laurent. But that wasn't all. She also booked coveted jobs as a cover girl for the Paris and American Vogue. Gia was the it girl. And having worked many photo shoots together, Gia got really close to makeup artist Sandy Linter. Her and Gia began spending endless time together and things started getting serious. Whether she was really in love with Linter, no one really knows, but one thing people know for sure is Gia didn't like being lonely. It's clear to me that this was sadly caused by abandonment and mommy issues. Even when surrounded by lots of people, Gia was a loner and without Linter by her side 24 seven, and add to that the constant pressure of the modeling industry, Gia sought out other coping mechanisms. So while Gia's career soared to unimaginable heights, her personal life began to unravel. The pressures of the industry coupled with her own personal demons led her down a path of self-destruction. Party goers of the decadent disco era were nose candy enthusiasts and the powder was easily accessible in the nightclub culture that Gia adored. At one point, being a user was even perceived as glamorous somehow. 
The Hotspot Club Studio 54 was a notorious place for using substances, and bumping lines ran rampant with the crowd Gia hung out with. This particular snow was a slippery slope, and it was one Gia dove down in headfirst and couldn't stop. As if she already didn't have it bad, she was dealt with the ultimate blow that derails her completely. Gia learned that her mentor had been diagnosed with lung cancer, and that was when everything started crumbling around her. And when Wilhelmina succumbed to her illness, she left Gia all alone in a harsh world where you eat or get eaten. Devastated and grieving, the young model turned to the only thing that still made her feel better and shut out the pain. While I don't condone her actions, I completely feel for her, because with only two years of industry experience, Gia immediately began to falter and fell into deep depression, and it wasn't long before the addiction took over entirely. To top that off, her addiction was not a good combination with her known attitude and troublesome antics at work. Gia was a total diva. Though her high-maintenance behavior was part of the edgy style that made her unique at first, there was only so much people were willing to tolerate. She became more and more notoriously hard to work with, and it only kept escalating. While on set, she started having explosive episodes, and sometimes she'd even start crying hysterically because she hasn't had her fix. One of her extremely low points was her falling asleep in front of the cameras because of everything she took prior to. So as her addiction spiraled out of control, her peers and so-called friends began to see that Gia was a train wreck waiting to happen and slowly began distancing themselves from her. Well, with friends like that, who needs enemies? During one of her last shoots for American Vogue, Gia's lesions and marks from her use were highly noticeable. So visible, in fact, that they can be seen in the final pictures even after all the airbrushing. No amount of makeup could conceal the unsightly scars and bruises. This, along with her growing unprofessionalism, started to endanger her young career. You'd think this would stop her, but she was off in a deep end. Wilhelmina as a company meant nothing to Gia without her mentor at the helm, and she left the agency to sign with her competitor, Ford Models. But her plan horribly backfired when Ford Models dropped her almost immediately. And from there, Gia's career was on an express trip going south. And it wasn't only the companies who were steering clear of her, but everyone else she knew. This decline in her professional life only exacerbated her struggles, driving her deeper into a cycle of self-destructive behavior. Jobless, friendless, and completely consumed by her addiction, Gia knew it was time for a change. Gia desperately needed a break to get her life back on track, but she will never find that break she so deserves. While she tried many detox programs time and again, she would only relapse each time. From there on, it was a back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back series of unfortunate events. Gia had her first and only television appearance, an interview that was to give an insight into her life and a chance for Gia to set the record straight. She hoped to show the world that she'd overcome her issues and was ready for a comeback. But instead, she was caught lying on television about her sobriety when it became evident that she was still on something while on the show. Gia's last magazine cover shoot was for Cosmopolitan in 1982. There seemed to be nothing they could do to capture what once was. Sad to say, by that point, she was an empty shell of what she used to be. She had no choice but to move on and thus Gia tried her hand at a number of jobs. And if you think there's a redemption arc coming, you are sadly mistaken for she was plagued with devastation when she was soon hospitalized for pneumonia and just days later, she was told that she had AIDS-related complex. Plain out of luck, the poor girl was also beaten and raped and left out on the street not long after. And unsurprisingly, on October 18th, her health took a severe nosedive and she found herself hospitalized for the final time. And on November 18, 1986, Gia Karanji passed away from AIDS-related complications. She was only 26 years old and was one of the first famous women to ever succumb to the disease. And despite her past iconic status, only her photographer friend Francesco Scabulo sent his sympathies. Not a single soul or any of her so-called friends from the fashion world even attended her service. Just like that, Gia Karanji's story came to a premature and heartbreaking end. 
In the wake of her passing, Gia's legacy endured in various ways. Her life was immortalized in the 1998 HBO film Gia, in which Angelina Jolie portrayed the troubled model. The film not only highlighted Gia's rise and fall, but also drew attention to the challenges faced by individuals grappling with addiction and the stigma surrounding HIV. As the fashion industry evolves, Gia's story stands as a testament to the need for a greater awareness of mental health, substance abuse issues, and the responsibilities that come with idolizing figures who might be silently battling their own demons. For more interesting stories like these on notable people, make sure you hit the subscribe button.